Coming up in early March is the next edition of the HSBC Women's World Championship Golf Tournament held in Sentosa at the Sentosa Golf Club on the Tanjong Course. Joining us now, Jerry Harvey Samuel, the tournament director, and Ko Sak Wee, Singapore National Qualifier Golfer. Great to have both of you with us on the show today. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you Sak- for having us. Sakwe, we're probably keeping you from being on the course on a Saturday morning, but thank you for uh, for uh, joining us today, uh, Jerry. Let's start with you. Uh, give us a give us some background on the tournament. What we're expecting this year? It's a it's a big one. It's been going on for many years in Singapore, so uh, people will undoubtedly be familiar with it. Why is this tournament uh, different or special? Yeah, thanks, Glenn. So, so the HSBC Women's World Championship is. Um, I mean, it's the premier LPGA golf event in Asia. Um, you know, we have the best field. We have the strongest field. We have the best players in the world coming to Singapore each year. Um, I think this year we've got nine out of the ten top top ten players in the world coming to participate in Singapore of a field wow. size of 66. Yeah, and, you know, um, 13, I mean, I think it's 11 of our 13 winners have been major winners as well in, in the context of global golf. Um, so there's, I mean, there's a reason the nickname for the event is Asia's Major. Um, strongest fields, dramatic finishes, um, and just some unbelievable golf that's played every year. And Jerry, before we bring in uh, Ko Sok Wee, tell us, I mean, some of the names you've got coming. I mean, I've seen them. They're fantastic. Some of the real marquee players are coming to this tournament. Yeah, I mean, we, we were, so that, you know, one of the things we talk about every year is who's going to win. And, and, and sometimes at golf tournaments, you have front runners, you know, you know who, the, who the main people are who are going to be up and around there. At, at the HSBC Women's, it's so hard because we have so many quality players coming. You know, Jin Young Ko, Inby Park, Daniel Kang, Brooke Henderson, Lydia Ko. These are all top, top players that, that on the global stage, that on their day, any of them, you know, they're all world class. Um, so it becomes very, very challenging to, to, to sort of try and estimate who's going to win. Um, an unbelievable field, you know, and, and I- even more special for us during a pandemic time, during the stages we're sort of transitioning out of the pandemic um, with international travel restrictions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The willingness of these top players to still travel internationally outside of America, outside of Europe to places yeah. like Singapore to compete is just phenomenal. Well, Jerry, I can answer that question right now. Who's going to win? It's going to be our local girl, hero, <laughs> Ko Sok Kui, hometown girl. Sok Kui, tell us about playing this event, because if I've understood it correctly, Sentosa Golf Club, which is hosting the event, is your home course. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. Sentosa is my home course, and I think that's the only advantage I have over these girls that's coming. So I've just been... <laughs> Just been practicing and really just getting used to the conditions that's, I mean, the course is obviously shaping up to be in its best shape right now. So really getting a lot of practice on the course itself and getting used to the conditions. Yeah. And Sakwe, uh, the it, it's a tough course. I've, I've played it several times over the years uh, as a guest of, of members and, um, uh, and I play it badly. I'll, I will... I absolutely confess. But the one interesting advantage I think that you and some of the other Asian, Southeast Asian players might have is you're, re- you're used to the climate and the temperature. And I, and I went to the HSBC last year and sat uh, in, in, the, in the, the penguin box and watching the players come up to the 18th hole, they were just drained, right, from the heat, from the sun. Uh, and we all know that playing in this part of the world is a physically grueling um, uh, effort, right? Not to mention the fact you've got to do it over four days and with all the pressure of the tournament. How do you feel about, for yourself, how do you feel about that, the mental pressure, but also the physical pressure of having to really perform rock solid for four days in a row? I mean, definitely, like you said, I mean, I think I have a little bit of advantage there, having grown up and played in such hot and humid conditions all my life. So I'm quite used to such conditions, but when it comes to the tournament week itself, of course there are other pressures and I mean it all takes a toll on your body. So you really have to stick to I mean, hydrating yourself, getting enough food, getting enough rest and then just letting your body be in, it, be in its prime condition to perform during that week. So Koi, on that point, and we'll bring Jerry on this afterwards, 
How have you adapted your, your regime, diet, training, whatever it may be, because of COVID restrictions? How has it affected and changed your game? Uh, well, COVID definitely put a stop to my competing schedule. So, I mean, with the whole travel restrictions, I haven't been able to compete uh, in the last two years. So, it's, I mean, we're really glad that HSBC is still supporting this event and giving us a chance to play in the qualifiers and just giving us a chance to play in the Asia's major. I mean, these are marquee names coming to town and to even have a chance to compete against them is like a huge opportunity. So, for myself, um, I've been doing a little bit of coaching during this COVID times, but at the same time still practicing and trying to keep my game up. Brilliant. And just to add to that, Jerry, for you, the same question really, COVID restrictions, how has that affected the course, uh, the tour, and your preparation? I mean, I can see you shaking your head there. I'm sure there's been a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, any, any major running any major event in, in a normal time is a challenge. Um, mm. Any world-class event like, like this event, um, the logistics that go into it. Um, you know, Sokwe's mentioned Sentosa Golf Club. Um, they're our host venue. And, and from an on-course perspective, um, there is nothing more than we could ever ask from Sentosa Golf Club. They do an absolutely phenomenal job of the course logistics, getting the course in great shape. Um, I know the LPGA players specifically love coming to play at this at this course um, because of how great it is. Off the course, um, in terms of all the rest of the logistics, you know, there are challenges. Um, it has been tricky. International International travel has been something difficult that we've had to manage. Um, 66 players coming in. Um, you know, from places like the US, places like Europe um, and the rest of Asia, obviously a, a big contingent from Thailand as well, um, has been a challenge that opening of the VTL lanes has helped immensely um, in helping bring a lot of those players and, and support teams into the country. Yeah. Um, so, so there have been quite a few sleepless nights, um, but, you know, we, we've worked through it. We have great partners with the Singapore Tourism Board who have, who have helped us get the event across the line. Um, and we staged last year in the middle of the pandemic, and we're looking forward to staging this year as we sort of transition out of it a little mm. bit more. Yeah, we're talking about Jerry Harvey Samuel, the tournament director for the HSBC Women's World Championship uh, coming up uh, the 3rd to the 6th of March. And Koh Sakwi, Singapore National Qualifier, the number two female golfer in Singapore. Uh, so uh, amazing to have both of you on with us this morning to talk about this. I know that you're even in preparations now, and it's a busy time for you, so we appreciate your time. But uh, Sakwi, uh, the last year and this year, there are not so many... Um, fans allowed on on the course, you know, to cheer you on and to watch and follow you. Does that have an impact uh, on your playing? Uh, is it better without fans around, or or do you like to have them on the sidelines, walking walking the ropes with you uh, throughout your games? How does that impact you from a playing standpoint? Uh, I think I mean having the fans are great. I mean. It's, it just makes the whole atmosphere really good, just blink in those conditions. Uh, but at the same time, I think, um, I mean, I have, in the last two years, I haven't really competed in, I mean, due to COVID, so I've never really played without fans as well. So, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure everybody will still have the same mindset to want to compete to win. So in terms of performance, I think everyone is still going to, still going to be, um, in it in the prime mindset but i think the atmosphere might be a little bit different yeah less jerry, from, yeah Sorry. yeah no it's fine and jerry from your point of view i mean just for the benefit of our listeners what are the logistics for fans uh spectators this year so so we we are looking to have some people on the course this year um as opposed to last year last year obviously when we were at the height of the pandemic um it, it was very difficult as we transition out we're looking to be able to get um some more people out um invitees corporate guests etc 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 um there are a lot of, of, of safe management measures and logistical issues that come with large-scale events in singapore um i mean the golf is inherently different to a stadium sport where you have um, very delineated areas where people sit, people sit in, in, in seated areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to control from that perspective when you're looking at a major golf course where, you know, pre-COVID we would have up to 30,000 spectators um, over the course of the entire event sort of roaming around in that open area. Social distancing, masks, 
wearing, um, you know, safe dis uh, group sizing, all this kind of larger scale. Um, mm -hmm. We're obviously disappointed uh, because we want to get back to a situation where we're having that same atmosphere, that same vibrancy that we've had pre-COVID. Um, and we will get there, um, but it's about us sort of transitioning safely. That's our key thing is, is our, our, our first and foremost priority um, is to have a safe event. Um, is to make sure that everyone who attends the event is safe, and that's the participants, that's the spectators, that's hospitality guests, anyone who attends the event. Um, and so we feel like we need to make sure that all of that's in place before we can look to expand further and start having, you know, much more group sizes come to the event. Yeah. Sakwi, uh, as you look forward to this uh this tournament, what, what are you going to be focusing on from a technical perspective? Uh, you know, competition will be fierce out there. Uh, what are you hoping to achieve on a daily basis when it comes to the mental and physical uh, approach to the game uh, that you're going to be able to play, fortunately, on your home course? I think for me, it'll be more mental. I'll be focusing a lot on how I deal with my mental mindset throughout the week. I just want to be in a good space. Uh, just to be able to enjoy the whole pressure of playing in the event and just to have fun in the midst of all of that. Well, as, I mean, I'd like to say, when you win the tournament, Sokwi, <laughs> you, you will come back on our show to talk about it, won't you? <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> we want to see the trophy, holding the trophy high. Uh, and, uh, and when you think, uh, Jerry, about this tournament, what, what is your hope? You know, this, you've done this five times. This, you're, not a, you're not a newcomer to hosting this tournament, but given all the challenges that you have, what is your eventual hope or goal, uh, you know, on Sunday after day four after the tournament's over and you look back and say, wow, that was good. This happened. That didn't happen. What are you hoping for? Well, you know, we're just hoping for uh, our events always had dramatic golf. It's always had dramatic golf. And, and that in turn has been synonymous with the event. I mean, we had Paula Crema. Um, I think everybody in golf knows Paula Crema's sort of 80 foot eagle putt on the second hole of the playoff in 2014 to win to win the championship. Michelle Wee, obviously in 2018, similar at Tanjong. You know, I think it was 20 or 35 foot from off the green to win that event as well. We want excitement, um, and 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 you know maybe we can't deliver that on site to the certain level that we had before, but we're obviously on Channel 5, um, you know, on Star Hub as well, and we want to deliver that that atmosphere and that drama, that drama um, yeah. to the, the wider audience, essentially. That, that's effectively what we would love to see, a great finish on that Sunday. Oh, let's hope so, and let's hope, uh, pray, pray, pray to the rain gods to stay away uh, for the yes. weekend as well, right? Absolutely. Uh, we don't, that, that, that's the other part of this, that we hope the weather will cooperate with you. Uh, Jerry Harvey Samuel, Tournament Director for the HSBC Women's World Championship, and Ko Sakui, Singapore's number two female golfer. Uh, thanks to you both for being with us. Good luck for a successful turn, tournament to both, and, uh, and please do come back after it's all over, and, and let's talk about how it went. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks so Wish much. Wish you the best of luck. Good